Right, this is my new, newly almost complete vertical head for the mill. It's a fucking mess in here. Um, it is a long way from perfect and it's not completely finished yet. But, uh, but with, with a bit of luck, I should get some, uh, some first chips out of it today. So, quick, uh, quick run over of what we've got. Uh, we've got a pair of uh, a pair of hand cut or home cut gears, um, 61 and 60 teeth, so that they don't uh, they don't mesh uh, continuously. They change all the way. Um, hopefully, that should reduce noise to a certain extent. Uh, we've got an SA30 spindle running in some relatively cheap bearings. They're from the Baltic Bearing Company. Not really spindle bearings. I'm not expecting the best uh, the best quality from them, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, the rest. Uh, the design was very much uh, restricted by what I had available to make the uh, what I had available to make to make the spindle from, which was a, uh, a drag lift axle, uh, axle for a drag lift uh, pulley. Um, I don't have threading capabilities at the moment, so uh, so in fact, when I remake this, I'm going to have to have to work uh, with a friend's lathe. But uh, so what's uh, what's missing at the moment? Well, for starters, none of the gears or shafts are hardened which is not great for taking deep cuts. Um, they need hardening and then the spindle bore needs grinding. Um, that hopefully I should be able to do. Uh, I've got a friend who's got, a, who's got, a, got an oven that can do that. Uh, the bottom, spind uh, bottom bearing casing is not sealed for the moment, so when you put oil in it, it drips out the back. And if it drips out around these what used to be gears, so that needs an o-ring groove cutting in it and a big o-ring putting into it. Um, likewise, the bottom piece, which caused so much trouble the other day, um, that needs a felt seal put in it to stop oil leaking around the spindle, but it seems to be okay for the moment. Um, I need a shield for the top, because there's nothing to stop crap dropping into the bearings. And I need a shield for the front, stop oil splashing out and fingers going in and chips as well obviously um, and it could do with an oil pump because basically the oil is all just going to well up in the bottom and there won't be any oiling here so I'm going to put a manual pump in temporarily I suspect and drop an oil feed out the side and run a manual pump through to, to be able to pump stuff back into the top. Um, what's not great about it, okay, I'm relatively happy with the dimension dimensional stabili stability I managed to get um, across the width of the bed here, which is uh, yeah, almost 20 centimetres, I've got uh, four hundredths of a millimetre of nod. Um, that's easily, uh, easily easily fixable with a couple of fag papers behind the uh, behind the mounting plate, or with a, a proper a proper scrape, which is what it's going to get in the end. Um, I did have trouble with the holes that are drilled into the mounting structure here, so that we can so that we can move the head. Um, that can be done. That can be dealt with later. Uh, what else have we got? It's a bastard to um, it's a bastard to, to tram horizontally because there's no way of uh, of turning the spindle without turning the whole spindle and the motor and the whole all that business, uh, which is a lot of work. So yeah, that's uh, you can't really turn it by hand. So when you put your uh, when you put your, your comparator on here, um, you can't really turn it. You have to slide it on the spindle nose, which is a bit naughty and not 100% accurate. Um, anything else that I would do differently? Yes, the big major, the major one, which you probably noticed if you're looking, is the fact that because I've used the uh, uh, a BT30 ISO 30 spindle nose. There's an awful lot of hangout on the tool, which 
means that I don't have a great deal of headroom. Um, the original Crusoe heads have a Morse 4 taper with a W20 collet. And I don't like W20 collets very much for holding tools, but they do give a very short, um, you know, a very a very short headroom. So you know you, you're gaining a good you know well that distance, uh, which is you know, it's a good six or seven centimeters. Um, so I'm going to have to remake this and move the spindle nose up to about there which is going to gain me five or six centimeters it does mean remaking the spindle putting the top gear at the top um, cutting threads and all that jazz um, I might take a different approach to the spindle nose but I don't think so I do like ER30 um, ER30 what am I talking about ISO30 uh, ISO BT30 um, gives uh, gives an, an awful lot of uh, options for tooling uh, here we've got an ER25, I've got an ER32 collet holder as well and you can go shrink fit and all that jazz um, the spindle nose is not wide enough for me to put drive dogs on um, so I think the new one will probably be much wider as well and there we go, so what we're going to hopefully do today is get some uh, some first chips right so here we go uh, these are the hold down clamps for my uh, my little milling vice Well, the answer to how long could that go was quite wrong. The uh, locking nuts on the top have backed off, and uh, and so the spindle dropped. That was what the noise was all about. Oh. Let's see if that plays any nicer. surface finish but I'm not sure how good this, uh, this cutter is so there we go first chips fair amount of debugging to be had yet I suspect but uh, there we go that's that <laughs>